my name's Stacia and thanks for watching Torn Freak TV. Let's recap what's happened in the past two weeks by starting with the Pirate Bay. In the last episode, we mentioned that in the Netherlands, the Pirate Bay has gone back to court after the lawyers of the Pirate Bay founders found out that Brain was trying to mislead the court by providing false evidence. No matter what the defense provided, the court still found the three Pirate Bay founders liable and ordered them to remove selected torrents from the list that they provided by Brain. The three have three months to comply, otherwise they will face penalties of 5,000 euros per person per day. In other Pirate Bay news, the site is once again up for sale after the last deal with the global gaming factory fell through. According to a report by Reservella, who is the owner of the Pirate Bay domain, there are four potential buyers. We will have to wait and see if anything actually comes out of this this time around. A week ago, a first BitTorrent powered live stream concert occurred and it was available for free to everybody in the world. The stream was provided by Far North Living Lab, which aims to create a platform for digital creativity. The software used to stream the performance was from the EU funded P2P Next project and several other partners donating the bandwidth for the experiment. The event went by smoothly and let's hope to see more events like this in the future. Michael Linton, chairman and CEO of Sony Pictures Entertainment, has been confusing the readers of The Times where he complained that the internet piracy means less money to make movies. While the question whether piracy boosts or decreased sales of theater tickets and DVD sales is still not answered, it seems like the entertainment industry is doing just fine. This is why the statement was even more confusing. Mr. Linton said, Online theft siphons billions of dollars of the marketplace. That means less money to make movies. Projects get scaled back and others get dropped. Some potential blockbusters won't get made. Some new writers, actors, and filmmakers won't get discovered. Mr. Linton went on and added, Last year, the leading Hollywood studios made 162 films more than 40 fewer than in 2006, and the lowest number in the decade. While it is true that the leading studios made 40 films less, it would be unfair to only show their statistics. When you also include the less known studios, the number goes from 162 films to 610, which is a 1.8% more than the year before that. Also stating that there is less money made is incorrect. In 2008, the U.S. box office brought in a record-breaking 9.6 billion U.S. dollars, which is 5.4% more than in 2006. Why Mr. Linton dislikes the internet so much is unclear to me. Google Music Search, aka OneBox, is a new service by Google which lets you search for a song through a Google and play it through a Google Player. Take a look at this video provided by Google explaining how the service works. Music is a big part of our lives. In fact, two of the top 10 queries of all time are music related. We think it's time to bring the power of our search to the music industry so that you can not only find, but also discover music. From now on, when you search for an artist, album, song, or even a few lyrics on Google, you can quickly and easily find sites where you can preview and purchase the songs. For example, suppose I heard a song the other day with the lyric, spin that record, babe. Now I can just type it in and find the song I'm looking for. In this case, Just Dance by Lady Gaga. Or if I search for Green Day, the first result provides me links to Green Day's most popular songs. Click one of the links, and instantly a preview of the song from one of our partners begins to play. The player also provides links to buy or learn more about the song. In addition to the streaming links, the new music results provide deep links to a number of other top online music sites where you can discover new music. So for example, if I click on the link for iMeme in my current results, I'm taken directly to iMeme's page for Green Day. You'll also see new results if you search for an album, like Set This Circus Down by Tim McGraw, and you can find specific songs by adding the song name to your search. For example, when I search for Snoop Dogg's Drop It Like It's Hot, I get a link to Snoop's single. Now you can find music using Google as quickly and easily as you can find everything else. Just search like you normally would. You don't even need to know the name of the song. Who knows? You might even discover music when you least expect it. Happy searching! One of the reasons why people prefer to download TV shows instead of watching them on TV or buying them is because they are free. The entertainment industry has been searching for models that would create them more revenue and get people to stop downloading. And for a while it looked like Hulu might take that job. Hulu is a website where visitors are able to watch selected TV shows and movies for free with commercial interruptions. According to one of Hulu's owners, the site might start implementing subscriptions as early as 2010. 
News Corp Chairman Rupert Murdoch said last month, are we looking at it with the view of adding subscription services in there and pay-per-view movies? Yes, we are looking at that. No decision has been taken yet. We will see how the viewers react to that. Now let's take a look at our app review. Here's Catherine. Hi everyone. Today let's take a look at an easy way to download TV shows. If you're anything like me, you probably watch a lot of them and getting them takes a lot of time. For that reason, I use an application called Torrent Episode Downloader, aka TED. TED lets you select TV shows you want to download, choose a season and episode number and let it do the dirty work for you. TED will automatically check for the new episode of your show every time after they have been scheduled. But please know that TED does have a few problems. Due to all the fakes online, it might sometimes happen that TED will download a fake file. But this doesn't happen often. You can download TED from www.ted.nu. Thanks! This is episode 4 of season 2. The Pirate Bay has shut down its trackers for good. Everybody expected this day to come sooner or later, and everybody had different views on how this will affect the BitTorrent world. Luckily, as soon as the Pirate Bay servers went down, the DHT and the PEX took over the load. The Pirate Bay team is now supposedly trying to convince other torrent websites to ditch the trackers and torrent files completely and replace them with magnet links. It has been more than two months since the semi-private torrent tracker Demonoid went offline due to hardware problems. According to the Demonoid staff, tracker is already online and the website will soon follow. The co-writer of Zombieland, Reet Reese, has been following the downloads of his movie on BitTorrent. Zombieland has been topping the charts as the most downloaded movie and Mr. Reese fails to see the benefits of this. Mr. Reese has tweeted that this will probably affect his likelihood of a Zombieland sequel. Zombieland has made more than $75 million to date on a $24 million budget. On the other hand, creators of the indie movie Inc. have learned to embrace piracy. After the movie appeared on torrent websites, it had received massive followings and had been downloaded more than 400,000 times in the first few days. Jamin Winnant, who wrote and directed the movie, is very happy that the movie is getting exposure it would not otherwise, and the increased popularity has boosted DVD and Blu-ray sales. Mininova, one of the most successful torrent websites, keeps breaking its records. The number of downloaded torrents has surpassed 10 billion, but the Mininova co-founder didn't seem too thrilled about this. Eric Devilbore told Torrent Freak, We never really expected anything. We don't really tend to focus on these numbers. We're just trying to run a site the best way we can. Vivo, the new music video and entertainment service backed by AT&T and YouTube is about to launch on December 8th. Vivo has been in the works for months and is promising to deliver what YouTube can't, a website dedicated to music videos, supported by ads of course. If you use torrents to search for your files, you have noticed that the site does not host the files but merely links to third parties. But thanks to Firefox add-on magnetizer, there's no need for a third party download anymore. When you select to download a torrent, Magnetizer will create a magnet link and download the torrent from the DHT network. If you are looking for other ways to download besides torrents, give a try to Usenet. Binverse is a service that can hook you up for a small fee, but before you decide to pay for it, you can give it a try. Torrent Freak viewers get a special offer of 10 gigabytes of unlimited speeds and 145 gigabytes at speeds of 1 megabyte. Give it a try at benverse.com slash offer slash torrentfreak. That's it for now. Please follow me on Twitter and let me know what you think of the show and if you have any suggestions. Until next time, take a look at this free movie you can download. Five and six. Our intent is to give you the opportunity to see as much as possible. Do not get pictures of basically the outline? Yes, I actually have work to do. Once we get inside, I'll tell you where you can and can't film. Okay. Like me personally, I, I do not want to.